Hey guys, hi, welcome back to the vlog. Um, welcome back. Uh, we're just going through, let's show them the setup over here. Okay, look here. So originally when we constructed the shop, when I say we constructed, I said when I hired my good buddy Bryce to construct the shop, I wanted cabinets um, to neatly organize all of our camera gear and whatnots. And uh, over the years, I've been in here, what, six years, five years? Something like that. Five, six years. It has accumulated. accumulated a lot of stuff. And unfortunately for us, technology doesn't last forever. So if you have a camera that's good today and two or three years from now, not only is it not going to be like vital to the content we're trying to capture, it's not going to be worth very much money. So we decided all that stuff we were going to get rid of. As you can see, most of it is gone. We should have done it before and after, but yeah. uh, this now it's just all like external hard drives or external batteries, um, connections, things of that sort. This I decided is like uh, my place for holding cameras. Batons. Batons. Uh, stuff we really don't use. I, what I wanted to show you though is look at, see, originally the idea was to, I put this in myself, guys. Not an electrician by trade. I just watch a lot of YouTube videos. And by uh, electrician, I mean just drill the hole in here and plug this thing in. But I was like, oh, we could charge all of our batteries neatly in here. That's cord management, dude. And uh, yeah, but since then, Logan <laughs> went out on his own, went rogue on me, and <laughs> did this thing. Which is nice. This is how he wanted it. So he has hard drives. Um, I can never get into this. Batteries. Action camera. Action cameras. Grab and go. Grab and go. SD cards. And I don't know. Accessories. But what we found is we need to get rid of this stuff because every year our camera guys want new, um, the updated versions of everything or, or try something new, a new lens or a new battery or sorry, a new uh, camera body. And so this is what has been collected over not only the last five, six years, but literally since I started Hush. This is the stuff that we've bought that we don't use, but also haven't gotten rid of. We've gotten rid of a lot of stuff over the years. When we're doing a good job, as soon as we decide we want something new, we, we sell it and then replace it with something new. But this is a stuff like this, probably five years ago, four years ago, this is what captured most of our content. Uh, it's a Canon 80D, it's a super, it was a nice camera back in the day, a super great body. People still use them today. Yeah. But since bringing Logan on, um, I don't know if it was you or Matt that kind of made us switch, but we went the, we used to be all Canon and now we're all Sony. It was like week two. Week two, so yeah, back then, Sony. it was this um, 80D and then this uh, XA20, which, I probably bought this eight years ago, and it, it's been a phenomenal camera. It was a phenomenal camera back in the day. It was kind of a you know, uh, point and shoot type thing. It had a, a, an external microphone on it. Um, it captured really good content. You could zoom really well on it. Anyways, we've come to a point where we're like, all right, let's get what we can out of this. And so Logan found a website that you could get on and sell um, a bunch of anything really camera wise. I think with all this and some more stuff we have, uh, they're only going to give us like we're at eighteen hundred eighteen hundred dollars, which might seem like a lot, but originally when we purchased all this stuff brand new, it probably accumulated to sixty five hundred seven thousand dollars. Oh yeah. Here's one I'm not getting rid of. This is literally the very first camera, uh, Sony. See, I was ahead of the curve. Back yeah, you knew. Twelve years ago, I bought the Sony. I don't even know what it is. It's a handy cam, but this was the very first camera I had to capture hunting content when I started Dude, the channel. Fresh out of high school, I when you when I went with you I filmed on that exact one right there. Yep, and it had a doubler on it. Um that you could screw on, which I thought was neater than a pocket on a shirt. Um and yeah, so the first couple of years hundred or I'd say ninety percent of the content uh we got was off this. I'm gonna keep this just because it's uh Momentum. sentimental values. Yeah. But yeah, over the years, we've tried different things for different, this was, I believe, um, this had an underwater housing that we got because we thought we could get the best underwater shots. And then we quickly realized that a GoPro that's a quarter of the size would capture the same quality of content, way cheaper, way easier to pack around. Uh, lenses that we've had over the years, I think this is actually just last year's lens. That, that died turkey hunting, I think, remember? 
Oh yeah, you knocked the camera. No, over. that was you. <laughs> oh, camera, you show, flip the back. It was me. Uh, this lens, this thing again, a technology doesn't last very long at all. So this was like. It looks like a violin box. This was like when we got this probably six years ago. It was the uh, cat's meow for stabilized shots, right? This is a uh, gimbal, an electronic gimbal. Um, and we got this and uh, we used it. I mean, we captured some good content with that thing. And then, um, dude, I don't even know. Oh, this was supposed to be a, gonna be our vlog cameras for a few years. Me, Eric, and Brian each had one. Again, way too bulky, it turns out. One year we decided that everyone was gonna be lobbed up at every moment while we were out hunting. So we got these uh, lob mics that we quickly understood that it was too big of a pain in the butt. Audio is always super important when you're trying to capture good content. So as you can see, we've put our time and effort into it. Um, but <laughs> this thing, <laughs> this actually went on this. That looked this like a rig. This is what was recommended to me. I don't know. Do you know why I shaved that off, Look. To, I don't know. Because it would get in the way, it would get in the shot. Oh, really? Yeah, so I shaved it off so none of these long hairs would uh, get in the shot. Anyways. It was a great setup, and I'm not, I don't regret any of this stuff because we either captured some amazing content, and which we did with most of it, or we learned um, our lesson about, you know, different different ordeals or different scenarios that we were trying to capture, and, and there's better ways to do it, and we're still learning. I think maybe we should put this in, like, the Hush Museum. This is a GoPro. It's a Hero 2. It's the second one they ever came out with. Second GoPro, or second um, camera GoPro ever came out with. I've got two of those. Got some fours. Got a ton of batteries. Got uh, more GoPro stuff. I don't. They're not. Are they giving us money for this? I'm just gonna see if they will. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell on this website. You type in what you have, and I'll tell you how much. I think they type, they uh, responded with zero dollars. <laughs> they're getting it anyways. Pretty cool to see where where it started and where we came. And um, you know, these guys are are chomping up a bit to get the newest gear. So we got to get rid of this. That's kind of a thing we decided to do is any every year at the end we're going to decide what we don't need what we want to upgrade sell the stuff that it's going to get replaced and then once we do that then we can replace it with the new stuff so logan's going to put this in a box and ship it off and um get some money and then we'll replace it with better content but better quality stuff to capture content with anyways oh yeah back, back to work logan let's sell this stuff <laughs> guys just have a little bit of a break in the weather and we are putting the tracks on the Can-Am four-wheeler so this is a Can-Am what is this an Outlander 570 B-twin 4x4 I've had this rig for a while unfortunately it's got to stay outside during most of the time pretty much all the time it's a little weathered but this baby runs and is reliable as ever like Matt said we're gonna throw the tracks on because where we're gonna go um, do the some spring bear hunts and some shed hunts are most likely gonna have snow and that's a nice thing about the tracks regardless of it being snow or, or dirt you can do both um, on the dirt we just go super slow but this is a process we do once a year put them on and off Matt and I have done it a handful of times together but each each time it's kind of like a little bit of a learning curve Okay, we got the rear end done, both of them on tight. Um, before I stored them, I made sure all the bolts throughout the whole thing was nice and ready to rock and roll. So the fronts, they're a little more difficult, but again, they're not that bad. They're, uh, just to give you guys a look at them here, you kind of have this A-frame. We're gonna remove a plastic piece that's in there with one bolt now, and it's just there to kind of protect a lot of the hardware and whatever else is under there, and then this, this comes off and the bracket fits right in there flush, perfectly designed for this model of four-wheeler. And these go down, you got your four bolts 
and then that thing's ready to rock and roll. Then there's actually some uh, computer component in there that you gotta unplug and plug. Two, we did my quad, came up to B Max house. We're gonna pull his out and uh, do it again. So we learned a lot from the first time. So we can take all that knowledge. This one should be even faster and easier. Well, guys, the objective of today was to run a few errands and to uh, get these four wheelers with their tracks put on. So they went from summer mode to spring mode real quick. So we're just finishing up B-Max four wheeler and then on to the next errand. Get chainsaws. It's that time of the year, man. You're gonna explore the mountains in the spring. Better have a chainsaw if you're gonna break trail. Quick little tech tip. Most of the trucks nowadays have these scissor jacks and uh, they have this little loop that raises and lowers the scissor jack. A lot of times you can get by with a quarter inch attachment. So this is a three eighths to quarter inch adapter or like a half inch to three eighths adapter fits perfectly inside that square. So you don't have to sit there and hand crank it. Makes it pretty slick. Got him. Ready to roll. Well, we made a uh, 16 feet of Can-Am fit on a 14 foot trailer. <laughs> I hope that rides all right. Should be balanced. You got weight over here. I don't know. We got them staggered if you can tell, but it's the only way they're gonna fit. We tried them. Well, we haven't tried them, but we were gonna try side to side like bring them up sideways, but there would be like a foot of tracks hanging off the outside, which would really be in line with like the wheel well. So I don't think that was gonna be a problem, but I think I like this better. Definitely will make the loading and unloading easier. Big time. Yeah, that was kind of sketchy driving them up sideways, huh? 